Welcome to the Swale in Pasture 2, and welcome to Chapter 5. So far, in this video series we've talked about repair of damaged streams using two basic techniques, vertical control structures and grade control structures. Vertical control structures are used to reduce the eroding power of water as it drops or descends. These vertical controls included SUNY bowls and log drops. The second kind, grade control structures, cause sediment to deposit and gradually raise the stream bed back toward its former level. This included one rock dams, and now, in this chapter, log mats. As you see in this aerial clip, this log mat is a wide low structure that spans the entire swale, slowing water and causing deposition and improving water banking late into the season. In 2016, we built two small log mats at the bottom end of the swale. We staged instant cedar logs across the channel and began to line them up. Geotextile fabric was placed under their upper ends where flowing water would tend to pipe through between the logs, and then we drove T-posts into the ground on the sides. We cut the wood at the lower end at an angle to ease the water's exit. This part is optional and acts as a rock splash apron wood. Smooth wire was placed across each mat and tightened around the T-posts, and then wire staples were used to secure the logs together and prevent them from floating under heavy rains. Now we have a look three months later after 16 inches of rain fell. The swale is full of water and vegetation has taken root. Notice how the water exits the log mat smoothly over the cut ends of the logs. The process appears to be working well as banked water supports green vegetation into the fall of the year. Here's the log mats after five years, beginning first with a look at the upper area. See how grasses and sedges have grown up through the mat, securing it to the ground and further binding it together. And now the lower mat after five years, as we've shown and explained in previous chapters, when your work is done well, it disappears. In 2018, we returned to the swale to add a third log mat. We wanted to improve the ability of the area to hold water and allow it time to infiltrate deep into the soil. We designed a wide, low mat that spanned the entire channel. This time we used old fence posts as well as instant cedar logs. We used geotextile as a sediment trapping fabric, but you can use burlap too. You can sit back and watch this process unfold in the next series of video clips. The first step in any installation is to remove dried grasses so that the repair materials, the stone or wood, can have solid contact with the soil. Here we are laying out the geotextile across the channel and then cutting a piece about three feet high that will tuck under the logs and posts and over about half of the upstream faces. If the top is the most important. They should all be flush in one line at the top. Otherwise, you'll see it pretty quick. Okay, got it. Yeah. Take it straight down, right to me, right in the middle of my chest. Smaller end. Good. The clearing, smoothing, and fitting continues. Where the log mat meets the bank, we cleared the ground to lay a rock wing. Dirt and water and stuff just goes right through those on a log structure. Just it's just one long hole. A rock structure, you've got a rock and then you've got another rock and like kind of like, like a brick mosaic. Right. It's important to clean and smooth the area under the logs or posts so that they fit together tightly as possible and so water can't run underneath. Smooth wire is stretched across and stapled to each log using a neat staple holding tool that saves injury and time.
The log mat is approaching the stream banks on both sides. T-posts are cut to length first and then pounded flush to prevent tripping and injury. Take a step back, this is a grade control structure. The type of structure is a log mat, it's built out of logs. It's meant to raise that elevation or the grade of the bottom of the channel and hold it there. We located at this place because looking upstream there's a big rock outcrop. This is the grade control that coordinates with the drop structure to create a pool. One of the things that you did really well was that you got really good contact with all the logs with the soil surface underneath it. We're in a, a vegetated swale portion of the channel coming down an alluvial fan. This is the area of the channel that's widening it and it's opening up. So we're putting in a grade control structure, a log mat. So it's a grade control built out of logs. And the idea is that we're going to slow down water, get it to drop out the sediment, spread the water out and allow it to pool above this. If you look a little bit further up, there's historically a, a line of rocks that has caused a little, a little pour over, which we're going to accentuate and protect that to keep it from becoming something that's vertically unstable. And we're going to create a pool, which will both protect the, the pour over by giving it a place to splash into. It will also hopefully pull water for a longer period of time and allow it to be habitat for things like amphibians and or drinking water for wildlife, um, habitat for waterfowl, that sort of stuff. We're creating something that's even across the stream bed. It doesn't stick up in one place or another really. So it, it slows the water down. It allows the water to flow over it in big flows, but it also slows the water down, drops out sediment, and allows the water to soak in both to the channel bed as well as to the sides. Since the logs are running in line with the flow of the water, they inherently have big gaps in them. We're filling some of that with the gravel. Basically this is base, it's got a bunch of fines mixed in with a little bit larger material, three quarter gravel. And that fills all the spaces and that allows water to soak in as well as vegetation to root and grow up through it. Um, <clears throat> logs also are lightweight and will float when water comes along. So what we haven't put down yet but will is a, a wire that's tied to tea stakes which are driven into ground at the edges of the structure to make sure that it holds it all down and the logs don't just float away. This concludes chapter five and this series of videos about techniques to restore erosion damage on your land. These techniques emphasize low cost, do-it-yourself approaches that use locally available materials such as wood and rock the benefits to repairing erosion damage include more water stored naturally later into the season, more vegetation that is used for livestock forage and for wildlife food and habitat, increased removal of carbon dioxide from our atmosphere, and definitely much better looking landscapes. Please see below for additional information and resources.